Hey everyone, Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. It is September 10th, which is the official midpoint of our Atlantic hurricane season, at least if you go by climatology. So we've reached the halfway mark, and boy, has it already been active. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about how we've done so far with our forecasts, what is to come in the next couple of weeks potentially, and uh, what we're seeing going on kind of globally in the tropics as well. Before we even get any further than that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've taken about a week off in our videos. The reason for that being is that I was on vacation, now Mike is. Uh, so getting the end of summer in here before a busy fall in the tropics. And I hope you guys have had a chance to get out and travel a little bit. I know this year has been a little bit different than usual, but it was nice getting some fresh air out there. Um, getting a little bit of break in the humidity last weekend. Of course, it's right back up here today, but uh, we do see some relief coming again next week as we head to the middle of September. Uh, in the Carolinas and much of the Northeast, that is. Uh, we're active on YouTube. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going on with La Nina now, which has been officially declared and how that's going to impact us in the tropics. And uh, let's talk about how we've done in our forecast so far. CarolinaWXAuthority.com. This was issued at the beginning of June. And the outlook that we had was for 15 to 20 named storms, 8 to 12 of those hurricanes, 4 to 7 of those major hurricanes, which is a very active expected season. Typically we see about 12 or 13 named storms, maybe five are hurricanes and a couple are major hurricanes. We've gone almost uh, one and a half to two times the average. Now here's the scary part everyone. We are at the midpoint of the season right now and we are right in the middle of that expected number of storms. So we're actually on pace to get twice this, 30 to 30 to 40 named storms. That That's kind of where we're on pace. Now I don't think we're going to get to 40. 30 on the other hand I'm not going to rule out at this point. So we may be looking at the Greek letters of our list. And, um, you know, as far as hurricanes go, we actually haven't had a lot of hurricanes yet, just five, which is above average for this time of year, but below the pace that we're expecting. Only one of those, that was Hurricane Laura, was a major hurricane. Um, these are the areas we've expected to be our most impactful areas by storms. And you can see uh, we've been expecting the northern Caribbean islands, Florida, the Carolinas, and the central to west central Gulf to be very busy, and they have as well as the far western Gulf and uh, up the northeast coast could be impacted as well. Um, and that was based on what we were seeing with seasonal analogs, with water temperatures, with how high pressure systems would work out. Um, you can see that we um, issued another article talking about our uptick here a couple weeks ago. We have had one major hurricane, Laura, that came in a little farther west, but that was in the red zone. And uh, Isaias was a storm here as well. And we're definitely not finished with storms and, in fact, major hurricanes at this point. Um, the forecast we had, we took up um, to uh, 18 to 23 named storms, and I'll be honest with you, that's still too low. We're probably going to be looking at 25 to 30 named storms. We're okay with 8 to 12 of those reaching hurricane status. If it's more than 12, then that would be 2020 for sure, and uh, 4 to 8 major hurricanes, so we still have quite a bit of activity expected here in the next couple of months for sure. Um, here's where the storms have been. So you can see I had a red area circled in here, and I had a red area circled in here, and a red area circled down in here, and of course over in here. And, you know, much of our storms have followed that track. There really haven't been a whole lot of surprises other than the fact that uh, we feel some of these storms out in here have kind of gotten names that maybe not necessarily needed them. Um, now, you know, having said that, um, you know, certainly you can get a few storms that don't impact land. That certainly happens every season. Uh, but it seems like every cloud sur uh, swirl that could have developed has so far. I mean, we had Kyle, we had uh, Dolly, Edward, all of those storms out in here. Um, the storms that impacted the Carolinas so far have been Arthur, which uh, curved near the Outer Banks. Bertha came in like that. Uh, we had Isaias, which has been the most memorable so far. Um, we had Faye develop nearby and move up the East Coast. Um, and Kyle developed over land, but really didn't get a name until it got out to here. Uh, and then in the Central Gulf, we had Cristobal, we had Marco, which threatened Louisiana but fell apart, and Laura, of course, uh, no one will forget, being one of the strongest storms in Louisiana in history. And then in the Western Gulf, uh, we had Hurricane Hannah, which formed very quickly in the Central Gulf. We also had some other storms which haven't impacted a lot of people, uh, Gonzalo and Josephine, um, for example, and uh, now we've got a couple more, which we haven't even added to the map yet because it's just been so quick, Paulette and Renee. Uh, Paulette being the female name, Renee the French male name. Uh, so don't get me started on that. All right, so here's what's going on with um, La Nina. And um, back in May, the forecast prediction was a pretty good chance we would drop into the negatives, which gives us a La Nina. 
uh, really need to get down below 0.5 degrees below average in the South Pacific, um, on the southeast side of the Pacific, that is, uh, in Celsius. That's about a degree Fahrenheit, and much of the forecast guidance had that happening, but not each and every one of them. In fact, only about 50 or 60 percent chance that the La Nina would develop. Uh, now, what is La Nina? Well, La Nina typically favors cooling in the Pacific, which allows for more rising air in the Atlantic Ocean and tends to lead to more storm development. So when we see a La Nina, we likely see more storms in the Atlantic. That isn't 100% the case, but typically that's how the pattern works itself out. El Nino uh, seasons tend to be uh, less favorable for numerous storms in the Atlantic. Uh, and neutral can kind of go either way. And for a while we were kind of neutral, but things have kind of dropped off. You can see this is the... Um, the index since uh, the middle of June, we've been kind of leaning La Nina, but then back to about neutral through much of July. And then in August, things have kind of tanked and then they kind of leveled off. And now we've gotten to September 10th, the midpoint of the season, we're at minus 7.33 degrees Celsius is the anomaly in the South Pacific. So this trend is not our friend if we don't want to see storms. The uh, National Hurricane Center and the Climate Prediction Center um, officially put La Nina advisory in effect. It's kind of weird. They had to watch out. Now they're in an advisory. I would have expected warning, but basically looking at a 75% chance of La Nina continuing into the winter time, uh, which we're going to get into a winter forecast later. We got too much out ahead of that. And you can see uh, maybe the peak is during the fall, October, November into December and early winter of the highest chance of having a La Nina, where the chance for an El Nino is extremely low, but does start to climb towards the... Uh, next spring into next summer 2021 but we've got a ways to go before we can even look at that um, you can look at the um, surface temperature profile across the entire globe this is from tropicaltidbits.com you can see that cooling in the south pacific which is leading to warming in the north atlantic and uh, you can see why the two are typically opposite each other and uh, actually much of the globe is above average temperature wise especially north of siberia and off of iceland so definitely some change going on in the climate uh, but you can see the warmest anomalies are closest to the East Coast of the United States, as well as the Caribbean, which are trouble points. I mean, that's the reason that we were thinking that storms would be favored in, favored in here, because these are the warmest waters with respect to average right now. Uh, let's take a look at um, earlier we had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potential systems on the map this morning. Two already named, one likely to be named soon. Uh, but that has dwindled. The good news for us in the Carolinas is this, this system has opened up into a wave and you can see just an area of clouds and moisture. It's not pretty out there in the Outer Banks today. We've had a lot of rain, uh, but nothing's going to organize before coming on shore. So we don't have to worry about wind problems. Uh, but now we've got more um, issues coming out of the Atlantic. Um, got a wave that could develop here, gives it a medium chance once it gets into the eastern Gulf and another system that could develop in the central and western Gulf. So we're going to keep an eye on those because they're close to land. Not a problem for us in the Carolinas. Paulette and Renee, though, are worth watching at this point, but still well out to sea. And then another system, which I think has a much better shot at going, and um, I will show you that is in red, and another system behind it likely to be um, the next area in orange. So, you know, these areas not very well organized. This one's falling apart. This one, obviously, organized. Renee, organized. This one likely to be organized. We have one after it. So right here, we've got kind of the four horsemen of the, of the apocalypse with Paulette, Renee, and then likely future Sally and future Teddy. We'll see if any of these becomes Vicky and uh, I think it's Wilfred. And then we're getting to the end of the list. <laughs> Pretty stinking crazy. I actually wanted to show you guys, I think I had a graphic made here real quick. Uh, here we go, yep. Um, so here are the list of names and typically we, we stop it at Wilfred, that's the 21st name storm, but I went ahead and added the next ones because I think we're getting into the Greek again like we did in 2005. So Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. It's all Greek to me. So you can see on here we have 37 potential names. I don't know what happens after Omega. Hopefully we're never going to find that out. But um, we're adding this to the name of the list of names because I think we're going to get past W here uh, before the end of September, which is pretty crazy. I think October could still be kind of busy. All right, so look at the satellite out here. This is a view of what's coming off of Africa, and uh, I guess uh, I guess we bless the rains down in Africa. We've got a lot more going on. This is our next likely long track storm, the one after it could develop. We've got one, two, three more after that that we'll keep an eye on, and I'm not even going to try to uh, see where these are going to go, but you can see September is going to stay awfully busy, maybe even into early October by the time we get this system going uh, over uh, Sudan and Eritrea. 
Uh, but that's what's going on out there. The water is quite warm, as I showed you before, even in the Southern Caribbean, but especially here between Florida and Bermuda, uh, things are primed and look how warm they are with respect to average off the Southeast coast. September usually sees our warmest water temperatures and um, you add on to what's typically the warmest time of the year with uh, extreme amounts of warmth with respect to average and that could certainly spell some trouble. The ocean heat content is quite high. It has rebounded in the Gulf, so Louisiana not off the hook at this point. Um, and then a look at our wind shear shows high pressure aloft here, um, high pressure aloft here, strong low, which has brought snow to Colorado. And you can see these two systems are getting a little bit of wind shear, but not a lot. Um, so we're seeing likely potentially two more hurricanes added to the list here by the weekend. Here's the system we are watching off the, off the Carolina coast. Um, right now, no longer really a closed low. It shows us low, but it really is kind of a trough in here. Uh, we don't see any westerly winds to the south, so nothing that's going to develop tropically, but a lot of moisture coming on shore. You can see that from the satellite. It's been a pretty stormy day across the outer banks and now moving into the inner banks, uh, but nothing of major concern long term, just a lot of moisture. Um, now let's take a look at the <clears throat> infrared loop, and you can see here's our four horsemen of the apocalypse. One, two, three, and four. Uh, this is Paulette. This is Renee, which is getting a little more wind shear at this point. Um, this one likely is going to be Sally in the next couple of days, and I think this one has a decent chance of being a Teddy. Um, the two waves we're watching here don't look too organized, but could be in more favorable spots when they get into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, here's Paulette, and you can see uh, likely to be a hurricane, um, and the hurricane center being kind of cruel, bringing it right over Bermuda. We'll see. Um, there's definitely going to be a lot of room for air early next week, so that can change. Um, and then uh, Paulette. Uh, that was Paulette. This is Renee. Could be a hurricane by the weekend, but then should weaken a bit as um, it gets some wind shear coming off the top from Paulette. Uh, that would be early next week. So both of these could be a hurricane, and that's what the official forecast is. Let's take a look at the European ensemble members, and this is from weathermodels.com, professional use, commercial use. And uh, what we're seeing, um, what I'll do is advance these out, but here are the two named storms, Paulette, Renee. This is the next likely one, Sally. And you can see kind of where these spaghetti tracks go. Oh, by the way, this could be uh, over time, maybe early next week, the next one. That's Teddy. Um, and then we start to see potential development in the central Gulf and maybe near Florida, but that's slow to occur. Uh, nothing strong at this point. At the worst, we have a Category 1 hurricane from Paulette and maybe Renee. Uh, but here we could see a tropical storm reaching 30 west by the weekend. Um, and then as we get beyond that, we start to see, of course, more disagreement. Uh, but likely a recurve coming here from Renee. Paulette, we're going to have to keep an eye on because some of these models try to bend it back like we saw with Florence. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but we're not going to necessarily rule it out just yet because the official forecast goes over Bermuda. There's definitely some members that are farther south and west that so we'll have to keep an eye on. There could be a split in solutions, either a recurve or something that's maybe more of concern uh, coming up on the 13th and 14th. So that puts us at the end of the weekend. Beyond that, Again, it's anyone's guess, but likely to see Hurricane from Paulette. Um, maybe a Hurricane Sally, some of the models show, and that's more of a low rider coming in at 15 north. Um, and then we've got a few models taking a swipe at the coast with Paulette, um, but likely a recurve. But again, there's been sort of a shift farther west, so we definitely don't want to rule it completely out. Um, but at this point, likely recurving east of the coast. But we've seen a lot of shifts west. Remember, Laura looked like it could come up east of Florida, end up going in Louisiana. We can see that again. I don't think Renee's going to be an issue, though. This is a worst-case scenario. But then we've got to watch what's going on here with the next system. That's Sally. And, oh, by the way, maybe a Texas hit from a tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane like Hannah, uh, which, of course, they don't need in South Texas. Um, and then taking that out further, we can see, obviously, models diverge, and it looks like somebody puked some spaghetti out over the map. Uh, so a lot to watch in the next couple of weeks. I don't think the southeast is off the hook um, beyond next week. Let's put it that way. Uh, finally, we'll take a look here. Um, this is Paulette's track, the hurricane model guidance, and the intensity does show a lot of these showing it as a hurricane. Um, and then a few solutions close to the coast. We'll have to keep an eye on those, of course, even though the model mean and the operational is well offshore. Um, and then a look at Renee shows maybe a hurricane and then weakening uh, to a point by uh, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, for the most part, no threat to land. Uh, one or two rogue solutions we'll keep an eye on, but at this point, they'll be fairly weak. Um, and then finally... Um, we'll look at the GFS, and I did want to show you this is the next one, Sally. Um, the models have trended with more of a threat to the southeast. This one uh, coming up Florida, kind of a uh, sort of an Irma track, if you remember Irma in 2017. Uh, the model run before it um, showed the system coming up Cuba and going up 
through Florida, kind of like Irma as well, um, the model before it was farther to the east, I think. Oh, no, actually it was farther to the west, but had a major hurricane over the eastern gulf coming into the Tampa Bay region. And the model run before that was farther east, coming up kind of like a, hate to say it, like a Dorian kind of track right up through the Outer Banks. Uh, but the model run before that was well offshore. Um, in fact, didn't really have anything. It was recurving near Bermuda. So the trend over the last couple of runs since about 18Z, so about four model runs ago yesterday, um, has been more of a, a track that could impact the Caribbean and Southeast. So stay tuned on that. Not saying it's going to happen yet. By the way, the Canadian model um, has a recurving system, while the Icon model has a stronger system earlier, which would be a better sign for us so that it could come up here. But if this high rebuilds, we could have a system that tries to drag back to the west. So we don't know yet if it's going in the Caribbean or if it's going to go north of the islands, but either way, we definitely have to keep an eye on things. And uh, more coming off of Guinea-Bissau, uh, Guinea the Gambia, and Senegal. Several more waves coming off this region here over the next couple of days. All right, well, I've spent a lot of time on this, but certainly a lot to talk about. Um, I guess the main impacts that I wanted to tell you guys were that we're officially in a La Nina, and that will stay that way likely through the winter. Uh, we officially have cooling in the Pacific. Things are definitely uh, heating up in the Atlantic now with several storms on the, uh, on the prowl potentially. And uh, more videos to come in the next couple of days. Subscribe to our channel for the latest, and we'll keep you guys posted. Be safe, and God bless.